Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming May of 2017 premiere auction. And today we're taking a look at a combination gun. This is a sporting rifle, well, sporting rifle and shotgun, and it's the sort of thing that I don't normally cover because there's normally not a whole lot for me to say about a typical sporting gun. However, this is one of those situations where what we are looking at is a really interesting and unusual custom gun. And I don't mean custom in that, you know, uh, it's been engraved a bit or the stock's different. I mean, someone put a lot of mechanical work into making this a truly custom firearm. Now, that person was, according to the marking on the barrel, a gunsmith by the name of Georg Nock out of Berlin. That's K-N-A-A-K. -A -A and what he did was he took a standard Mauser 98 pattern receiver, uh, fancied up the barrel, and then added a shotgun below it. And this is a rather unique operating shotgun in that the, the entire shotgun barrel pivots out to the side for loading. So this gives you everything you would need for a good hunting trip, whether you encounter a, uh, a deer or birds, anything you need to do. So let's take a closer look up at the mechanism and also the proof marks because they tell us some interesting things about the history of the gun. So the rifle action part of this firearm is nothing particularly out of the ordinary, although it is nicely case hardened and engraved. This is a Mauser 98 pattern bolt action rifle, has a magazine there just like you expect, everything is normal, we'll get to that thing in a moment. Uh, the barrel has been nicely made fancy, you'll see the top of the barrel here. Um, has been patterned to reduce glare. The sights have been replaced with Sporting Express sights. And this really fine texturing has been added in a number of places. The front sight is similarly uh, replaced. Good sporter bead front sight. Then where this gets really unusual is this thing underneath the shotgun barrel. So the way that works is a rather large lever on the bottom that we are going to pull 180 degrees around and that is going to cam the shotgun barrel out to the side. You'll notice the stock has been inleted here so that you have a nice groove to drop a shotgun shell into. Round goes right there into the bore. Uh, this little protrusion is your extractor. So after you've fired a round and you need to get it out, just pop that out. And this locks basically just by having the shotgun barrel set into this block with a nice guide groove on the top. So when I pull this back in. You can see the cam track right here that is going to translate uh, rotational direction, rotational movement of the lever into side to side horizontal movement of the breech. And there it is. The middle barrel connection out here is it's sort of just kind of a, a loose support. It looks like it might be attached there, but when we actually pivot the barrel, you can see that it pulls away. And the front end is a pivoting swivel connection. So there's not a whole lot of movement you can see way out there, but there's the barrel open and there it is all the way shut. Now, in order to fire this, you'll see that there is a double set of triggers there. Sometimes if this were just a rifle, you would expect that to be a set trigger. In this case, it is actually the front trigger for the rifle and the rear trigger for the shotgun. The front trigger works. It's unmodified. It is the normal rifle action. So pull the trigger, striker drops, fires. The rear trigger, however, is connected to a second firing mechanism. This is a hammer that you have to manually cock for the shotgun barrel and pulling the rear trigger drops that. There is the firing pin protruding from the back of the shotgun breech and when I drop the trigger here for just a brief split second you can see the firing pin come out. There it is. So that's, that's how the firing mechanism is set up. Overall, the system is a little bit heavy. Certainly it's substantially heavier than just the rifle would be. Uh, this comes to just a hair under 10 pounds, so right about four and a half kilograms. Um, still, however, balances reasonably well, and it's certainly lighter than carrying two guns around all the time. Now let's take a look at some of the markings. Our manufacturer's mark is right here on top of the barrel, as you would expect for a good custom gunsmith. Apparently his company was called Deutsche Waffenfabrik, and there is the guy's name, Georg Nock, out of Berlin, and I assume SW48 is uh, an address. 
So back here on the receiver we have this interesting marking. This tells us two things. What it's supposed to tell us is how to load cartridges for the rifle. This is 2.67 grams of military flake rifle powder. That's the, uh, the appropriate powder charge that you know, it has been, it's been proofed and it's safe and that's, that's the charge that you want to use, uh, presumably also to regulate the sights. Now they didn't tell you the bullet weight, but they did tell you that it was a metal jacketed bullet. That's what the letters down here mean. And there's, there are a couple that are missing because this optics mounting screw has been put into them. The other thing that this tells us is that it should be a pre-World War I gun because they changed the style of these markings uh, after, I believe after 1913. Then we also have a couple of marks on the bottom of one of the barrel flats. Uh, these are proof marks, basically, and then a 172-28 is an interesting thing there. That is actually defining or describing the bore diameter of this gun in terms of gauge. So just like 12 gauge or 14 gauge or 16 gauge, which by the way the shotgun version of this is, 128.28 gauge, uh, and that slash is in fact does mean a decimal point, 172.28 gauge is the official British standard at the time for 8 millimeter. That actually defines not the land diameter, but the or not the groove diameter, but the land diameter. So uh, the the narrower diameter of the barrel. That translates to 0 .300 inch, which is standard for 8 millimeter. Uh, we are typically used to measuring the larger diameter, you know, the base or the the external diameter of the grooves, so the larger one, and that's where, why we would call the cartridge 8 millimeter. Uh, typically for a gun like this it would be either 318 or 0 .313 inches on the outside, but then the inside diameter of those grooves is going to be smaller, in this case 0 .300 inch. And just to top it all off there's some really nice engraving across much of the gun. And one last cool feature, a little embellished patch box here on the bottom of the stock, which I can open up. And that, I believe, is for storage of four 8mm rifle cartridges. I say that because there are four little divots in there that are probably from bullet tips. That's a little small for 16 gauge shells, so that would be for rifle ammunition. There are, I think, two different kinds of hunters out there. There are people who are afraid they're going to damage a gun in the brush, and so they take something that is simple and durable and inexpensive. And then there are the people who want to have a really cool rifle, uh, and shotgun for that matter. And if you're one of the latter half, well, maybe this is the hunting weapon for you. Uh, it is an older gun, but should be perfectly safe to use as far as I can tell. So. If you would like to go out and do some hunting with 8mm and 16 gauge, take a look at the link in the description text below. That will take you to Rock Island's catalog page on this piece, and uh, you can check out their pictures and description and price estimates and all of that good stuff, and place a bid either in person at the auction or online through their website if you're interested in buying it. Thanks for watching.